Uh, I'm Larry Schrader. I'm a plant physiologist and uh, moved here to the Tree Fruit Research Center in 1995. Uh, I had not worked on tree fruit prior to that time, and so it was sort of a second career for me, but uh, been a very fascinating one. Uh, I have worked in the area of environmental uh, physiology. Uh, that is, this area we have a lot of environmental stresses, high light, high temperature, which uh, have a number of effects on fruit, and so we were looking at a, a number of different disorders, sunburn being one of them. So this is just one little part of, of our work. Okay. Well, I've worked on sunburn for a number of years uh, because it's a major problem uh, for apples in the, in the state and about 10% of our crop is normally lost to sunburn and so with a billion dollar crop that uh, is costing our growers a lot of money. Uh, about one-sixth of the orchard acreage in the state has evaporative cooling, uh, overhead sprinkler systems that uh, spray the fruit and then as the water cools evaporatively it cools the surface of the fruit. And, but what we have found is that growers really don't know when to turn on the irrigation or when to turn it off. And consequently, to be safe, a lot of them are using more water than they need to use. And so we reasoned that if we could develop a sensor that simulated a real apple, uh, that uh, that could be very useful. And so this is, is the sensor. Uh, that was developed. Uh, we are still working on it because there are different models of it. Uh, we started with a, a fairly, fairly simple system uh, that simply gave a readout of the temperature, of, uh, with, in other words, the fruit surface temperature, and uh, that was used by the grower then to make decisions about when to turn on the evaporative cooling, when to turn it off. Uh, some now want to move on to the next level uh, where they have this temperature transmitted uh, by wireless means or other means to their laptop computers or to a cell phone to tell them. And then the third stage, and uh, this is one that you saw yesterday or talked to the grower, where he's actually automated his system so that it turns the solenoid valves on and off uh, as needed uh, and, and according to the signal sent from the sensor. Uh, I probably should have said at the outset that there are two major causes of sunburn and one is high fruit surface temperature and the other is ultraviolet B radiation, the same radiation that burns human skin. And when the fruit surface temperature reaches a certain temperature, that's when sunburn occurs. So the evaporative cooling reduces that fruit surface temperature and protects the fruit from, uh, at least helps to protect it from sunburn. Well, the, the concept is that we needed to develop a sensor that simulated a real apple. And it took quite a while to uh, get the right color and the right contents uh, inside this, this uh, sensor so that it would perform like a real apple. And to, to uh, make those final uh, decisions, we had to use thermal couples on real fruit side by side with the sensor and kept tampering with it uh, until we got it to match up. So this, the temperature output of, of the sensor now is very close to what uh, the real apple uh, fruit surface temperature is. The, I, I think that there are two major aspects of this. One of them is an environmental one, that is to utilize water more efficiently and I think that's going to become more important to growers, to society, et cetera, uh, as time goes on because we're going to, to have a shortage of water and uh, anything we can do uh, to use that water more efficiently is certainly going to be desirable to the, to the public as well as to growers and others. So if they use less water uh, on their fruit, uh, they're saving energy pumping the water. Uh, if it's done right, they have a higher quality fruit and uh, pack outs are much higher and uh, so the returns are higher. So uh, there's all kinds of, you know, it's a win-win-win for, for the water side as well as the fruit side. 